Continue to shine bright in the Big Apple, but the Braves were out rallied by the Mets in 11. Tonight, newly minted All Star Julio Teran takes his turn against a Mets club he dominated just six days ago. He got it. It's game two of four tonight at City Field. It's the Braves and the Mets on Sports South. In the Big Apple, Game 204 tonight at City Field between the Braves and the New York Mets. All your long Braves baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. The crowd is filing in for the second game of four tonight. Extra innings went New York's way in Game 1. The Braves try to knock the series tonight on a beautiful night for baseball. Hi again, friends. Joe Simpson, Chip Carey. Welcome back upstairs. Here at City Field, where tonight Julio Teran makes his 53rd Major League start. That's not a very big number. However, Joe, it's his first start as a National League All-Star, a very big night for him. And certainly well earned. Boy, he's pitched well this year, stepping in as the ace for the Braves beginning on opening day. And he's really turned in some good work in recent days. In fact, he's gone at least seven innings in his, each of his last four starts, including the two you're about to see, the one there against the Phillies where he was dazzling, gave up only one run. And then in his most recent start against these New York Mets, he got three runs to work with in the first inning, made that stand up in a three to one victory. And again, back to back games where he only gave up one run. He's fifth in the league in ERA, tied for first in quality starts. And against the National League East, real good numbers, a five and one mark with a 179 ERA. Who says he shouldn't be on the all-star team? He's going for win number nine tonight. Hey, anytime Julio Teran's in the neighborhood, you feel good about your chances. And speaking of the neighborhood, Tom Hart has more on that crazy neighborhood play we saw last night. A wild night in New York in game one of the series. Plenty to talk about as we continue before game two tonight right after this.
Tonight, the Braves continue their series with the Mets live from City Field in Queens. It's game two of this four-game series. Welcome back to the ballpark. I'm Tom Hart. We're hoping for less controversy tonight than we saw last night. In a back-and-forth affair, it was a thrilling game that was marred by some confusion. In the ninth inning of last night's game with Shea Simmons on the mound, the Mets attempted a sacrifice bunt. Chris Johnson thought he would turn a double play, and Angleton Simmons made the turn slightly off the bag, and lo and behold, it looked like the Braves got the lead runners. But then, crew chief Mike Everett got everybody together, said, no, that's not the neighborhood play. We can go to video review. And after that, Freddy Gonzalez was ejected from the game. Here is a statement last night from Major League Bay uh, Baseball. The regulations allow umpires to determine if they consider a play to be a neighborhood play or not based on a variety of factors. Some of the factors they consider are the throw, which was right on the money from Johnson last night, and if the player receiving the ball is making the turn, which Andrelton Simmons was. Umps might consider whether it was an errant throw, it wasn't, or if a player receiving a throw who was not at risk of contact made an effort to touch the bag, he was and he did. The confusion continued throughout. And that confusion leads to today where Tommy Lestella and company still trying to figure out what the neighborhood play is all about. The neighborhood rule is there to protect the middle infielders. I think, you know, he's he's coming off the bag, you know, by that inch or whatever it was to, you know, clear a lane to throw. And I think it's the same thing, you know, if, if I were flipping him the ball or if, you know, Chris is throwing him the ball on a bun or whatever happened on that play. I mean, you know, it's a tough call and obviously it got reviewed and overturned, but, you know, I'm not really an authority on the situation. So. So the confusion continues. We turn to the late Mr. Rogers, who says, would you be in mind? Could you be? No neighborhood play? We'll see if it has an effect on tonight's game. The weather is just about perfect. It's nice and breezy here at the ballpark. Great night to be a hot dog rapper. Speaking of hot dogs, we'll send it to a couple of those up in the booth. Chip and Joe will have a check of the lineup in first pitch with all-star Julio Tehran on the mound tonight for the Braves. Area Mazda dealers, we welcome you to the Big Apple, Flushing, New York, in the borough of Queens. That's the home of City Field and the home field of the New York Mets, where it is a warm, muggy night, 87 degrees. Winds out of the west at 14 miles an hour. Storms are expected later on tonight. Here's the Braves starting lineup presented by Skipper Freddy Gonzalez and Toyota. Justin Upton in the cleanup spot. He's done good work against the Mets. Freddie Freeman, a point away from 300 again, Joe. He's swinging a hot bat, too. And a tough customer. We 
learned a lot about just six days ago. Jacob DeGrom, who lost three to one to the Braves, but boys, he got a good arm. Throws hard, has had a tough time here at home, though. 0 and 3 at City Field. Lanky guy, 6'4, 180, 26 years old, out of Stetson University. His four keys to pitching success tonight. Number one, inside job. He really worked the right handed hitters over inside, especially Justin Upton in Atlanta. BJ goes the other way with a leadoff single. Good start for him again. And an excellent job at the top of the order. The home at night, he hasn't won at home. He hasn't won at night. He's 0 and 3 at home. He's 0 and 5 and 5 night starts. So that could be very positive for Atlanta. All three runs they got off of him in Atlanta came in the first inning. That was a very odd game for Atlanta. They put the first three batters aboard in the first inning. Then DeGrom got a couple of outs. And then Chris Johnson doubled home three runs. And that's all Atlanta got off this guy the rest of the way. So promising start again tonight with Upton at first and Embleton Sons in the batter's box. Speaking of hot hitters, that qualifies for the Brave shortstop. Yeah, and he's on a multi hit spree. And his hot run is the substance of our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. Eight game streak, 412 average with some extra base hits mixed in there. And six multi hit games. His average up to 266. That caught a corner from DeGrom, a 95 mile an hour fastball. Different responsibilities for Simmons hitting second. And when he's put the ball in play, Joe, it looks like he's not trying to pull everything. When he's going good, he's hitting the ball more to right and center during the streak. Still a, an abundance of hits to left field, but a few more up the middle. Late time granted by Mike Everett, the home plate umpire. The ground not too thrilled about that. One ball, one strike. There are no animated discussions during the exchange of lineup cards before the game. Terry Pendleton exchanged the lineup with the umpires. In case you wondered about that after the ejection of Freddy Gonzalez last night after the neighborhood play and subsequent replay. It's Todd Titchener, I beg your pardon. Listed there, it should be Mike Everett behind the plate. That one's fouled away. And ball and two strikes. There was some talk at the Braves Clubhouse after the game that a Pandora's box might have been opened up. And that any call at second base now might get an argument. Well, everything that Tom outlined uh, about what Major League Baseball said, that's what the Braves did. It was a good throw. He actually was trying to turn a double play and almost did. That falls into every category of the neighborhood play. Which is not reviewable. I'd be interested in knowing which umpire it was that persuaded Mike Everett to go ahead and take a look at it. Because Everett was at first base last night and he was the one that told Terry Collins to begin with. That was a neighborhood play, not reviewable. Terry Collins didn't change his mind, one of the other umpires did. Asked Freddie after the game too, had the game been decided in that inning, would the game have been protestable if that's a word? Yeah, if he could have done that. Yeah. And he didn't have an answer. And I'm not sure if he got an answer in time for tonight's game either. Simmons chased a ball in the dirt, and with first base occupied, he'll be struck out. One on, one out. For Freddie Freeman. 
DeGrom is from De Leon Springs, Florida, but I, I've looked, I looked it up. DeGrom in the Dutch language means moss. How amazing is that? Just one of those little known facts. Here's Freddie. He has made a very steady, deliberate climb back towards that 300 mark with batting average. You know how he wears out the Mets. And if he gets a couple of hits tonight, there's a good chance he'll start play tomorrow above 300 for the first time since the 30th of May. Mother's Day to Father's Day. It's a little tough time on Freddie. Emotionally, and it takes a little bit to get through that. I'll tell you what, this guy can air it out, and he can get away with pitching upstairs like that. Started Freddie with a good curveball. Got Andrelton on a what looked like a slider in the dirt. I mentioned he was somewhat slightly built. John Smoltz was with us last week when we were doing the game that the Grand Pitch and he was talking about when he learns how to use his lower half a little better. He could be even better. Upton's running. The pitch is inside. The throw towards second is off the glove of Tejada and into shallow left center field. And Upton will make his way to third base with one out. If you were with us last night, we talked about this a little bit about Darno having some problems throwing in Atlanta. He was air mailing some throws into center field. He was short hopping the infielders. Good jump by BJ and another. Off the mark throw that ate up Tejada. Granted, he had a tough pitch to throw on, but that was nowhere near. No one base E2. RBI chance now for Freddie. And he can't get it. Pitch was up and away from him, and he struck out on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Braves now two for the last 19 with runners in scoring position. And that's that's tough because Freddie's so good at getting that guy in from third base less than two outs. Even the ground ball would have worked. Still have time to vote for Justin Upton for that final National League All Star spot. Fifty runs batted in for Justin so far this year. And he unloads toward left. Eric Young Jr. drifts back onto the warning track. Leaps at the fence. And he makes the catch. Justin just missed. A leadoff hit for P.J. Upton. And Atlanta out of luck in the first.
the top of the first inning. Terry Collins ball club enters play at 40 and 49 for the year and their story starting nines presented by Toyota. Ruben Tejada had the game winning RBI in the bottom of the 11th inning. He's turned that trick a couple of times for the Mets this year. And really Atlanta's got to keep an eye on Curtis Granderson. He's homered in three of the last four games he's played against the Braves this year. Which brings us to Julio Tehran. If you don't get him early you don't get him. He just steadily gets better as the game goes along. I, I mentioned that he's gone at least seven innings in each of his last four starts. He's really on a good roll and faces the Mets for his second straight start which brings us to his Ford keys for, for pitching success tonight second time around. It's always tougher on the pitchers to win two games back to back against the same opponent. So he let's see if he makes any adjustments or if the Mets hitters do. And secondly the Braves have lost two in a row not a big deal but need him to put a stop to that right now and they've got their ace on the mound to do it. Curtis Granderson has found a home at the top of the batting order for the Mets. Granderson Holbert to tie the game at three last night and he looks downstairs at ball one. 234 may not look like much as far as the average is concerned, but considering where Granderson came from after the first four weeks of the season, he's done that a lot. Off the facade of the second deck. We've seen this movie a bit too much, haven't we? What the Braves are seeing of Curtis Granderson is the guy that was tearing out the right field porch in New York about two years ago. The ball just explodes off his bat above the belt and belted. He can get the barrel out there in fine measure on a fastball. So he's the Mets home run leader with 14 now a leadoff shot makes it one nothing. Third leadoff homer this year for Granderson. And the 12th home run allowed by Julio Tehran. Here's Murphy. And these guys want out of play foul. These two men will be National League teammates at the All-Star game. Murphy is the Mets All-Star representative this year. Two. Murphy had a hit last night. That gives him 107 for the year. Casey McGee of the Marlins has had a big year. And Murphy is down swinging. Tehran got him for the first out. McGee with 110 hits leads all National League hitters. Murphy second, Goldschmidt, McCutcheon, and Pence with 106 times for third. Here's David Wright. Mets are happy to have him back in the lineup. We did not see him in Atlanta. Wright was out with that sore shoulder. David played last night and hit a third inning home run against Mike Miner. Julio's got to work under the assumption that one run, one solo homer is not going to beat him, despite the fact that in four career starts against the Mets, his average run support is only 2.3. If he's able to hold him, 2.3 will work tonight. Two quick strikes for David Wright, and he takes a shot at right field. Hayward in the corner is there and has it. Wright flies out. Two outs after the Granderson leadoff homer. It's no surprise, and 
this point in the season for the Mets that their offense has been collectively disappointing. But after the trade of Ike Davis, I think they have to be, Joe, pretty happy with what this man has done as their everyday first baseman. Well, there's another matchup thing here for Julio Tehran against Lucas Duda, who's three for ten against him in his career with a homer. Julio with his fastball, when his fastball is down in the zone, he gives up a pretty high average. Lucas Duda is a low ball hitter. 409 average with his fastball in the lower part of the zone. That's 409 against Julio and Duda, 412 in the lower part of the zone. Juan Lagares is on deck. He's the fifth place hitter for the Mets. One in, two outs, bases empty, bottom of the first. His average over 310 since the 12th of June. He's the second best home run hitter on this club. He leads him in RBIs with 44. Very similar power numbers to Braves first baseman Freddie Freeman. You pointed that out back in Atlanta. Duda takes a two-out walk. And Julio started against the Mets in Atlanta. Seven innings, four hits, one run allowed. He walked three that day, which is a high number for him. Struck out five. Garris had a hit last night in five tries. He's a 285 hitter and pops one out of place to right one to the Mets center fielder. I think this guy too, Lagaris, has been a nice story for New York, not just this year, but going back to last season too. He was kind of one of those diamond in the rough types that I'm not sure they thought he was as going to be as good a player as they projected. I have to say that with respect to where he plays on the field and how he goes back on the ball, he's probably the best center fielder I've seen at that since Andrew Jones. Really? Yeah. That's quite a compliment. And to run, spun off that pitch and missed. Two balls and a strike. Ball that Chris Johnson hit last night off the top of the fence in center. We thought it was either going to be gone or maybe a triple. He made that play close. Yeah, I almost got there. If it had landed on the track, you'd have caught it. Yeah, I was confused by the ball that. Justin hit to end the first inning. I thought that ball was gone. And the wind seemed to hold that up. If there's a hole in Lagares's offensive game, it's that he loves to swing the bat. He's only walked nine times in 193 at bats. He swung at that one and hit it to right. Hayward got to it on one hop, and the Mets have runners at first and second now with two outs. This has been the pattern for Julio from time to time. First 30, 35 pitches, he'll have a little bit of trouble. He's about to make his 20th pitch of the game. Well, again, it's not easy seeing a team two times in a row and hoping for as good, if not better, results. There are those numbers you're talking about. Chip, the first 30 pitches in the ball game that have been an issue for him after that. No issues to speak of. But each one of these Mets hitters, you know, went over the videotape quite extensively to find out what did he do to get me out and what adjustments do I have to make? That was a good adjustment right there by Lagaris taking a pitch outer half to right field. 
Travis Darno is the New York catcher. And he's got a three game streak. And he took a strike. When Darno was sent down to AAA, his skipper Terry Collins said, Look, you need to go down and find a routine and stick with it. A game plan routine, how to prepare for each game you play. And Darno felt that that was really helpful to him, and he has stuck with that. Not only was he successful at AAA, he's come up and gotten on base with great frequency since coming back to the big club. One ball, one strike. Darno didn't want to reveal what that routine was. But he said it's something that really has helped him overcome the disappointment of a 0 for 3, 0 for 4 night. Doesn't let it pile on from game to game. Julio looked in like toward the dugout after that pitch. I'm not sure why pitch was not a strike. I thought at first he was just kind of complaining about it. To center. And BJ is there. That ball kept drifting. Curtis Granderson hit one that didn't need to drift. It was a laser off the facade of the second deck and right. A leadoff homer gives New York a one nothing lead heading to the second. Anderson. Yeah, he's he's wearing out some fastballs and especially fastballs that are up. On the left, Avilan's pitched to him in the eighth inning, center of the plate, just a little bit, maybe just a skosh lower than the one Tehran threw him. But both fastballs and both out over the plate, and he rocked both of them. Coaching confab with Roger McDowell and Julio Tehran after the first inning. And Jason Hayward goes to work in the Atlanta second. Hayward, Chris Johnson, and Tommy LaStella. And Jacob DeGrom has been staked to an early lead and gets ahead of Hayward with strike one. Jason's been working overtime in the cage before the game. Trying to snap out of a seven for 53 slide. Started him with two changeups, came back with a out of the zone fastball. Up the middle, Tejada couldn't handle. Might have had some funny spin. And Hayward's aboard to start the second. Did he try to barehand that? Jason didn't get out of the box at all. It was a 95 fastball that jammed him. 
He's looking for it. He thought he fouled it off. And I'm not sure what Tejada was. What happened if it was spin. Or if it was barehanded. Oh, I bet it had some spin and kick back to his right where he had to try and barehand it. That's a weird play, but it's an infield hit, the second hit of the game for Atlanta. And a strike to Chris Johnson. Might give us a better picture. Nope. Try and barehand it. And he had all the time he needed to just glove it and throw because, as you saw, Jason didn't know where the ball went. Isn't that funny though? Jason hit some rockets last night right on the button. Nothing to show for it on those hard hit balls, and then he hits one. <laughs> just a dying quail out there behind second. And he never saw it leave the bat. He didn't know where it went. <laughs> right? Base hit. Three of Chris's 29 RBIs came against DeGrom in the Braves' last meeting with him. He pushes him off the plate with ball two. Jason does some running. They've seen some trouble by Travis Darno. He threw one errantly at second base when BJ Upton singled in the first inning. Braves rank. Full. Sorry, Chip. The Braves rank among the. MLB leaders in stolen base percentage. Jason, nine out of 13. That's still the way Darno's throwing. You want to test him, I think. He's going. Good jump. Chris swing and a miss. The throw short hops in front of Murphy. And Jason Hayward steals second. That's his 10th. Braves are two for two in steals tonight. And one out. Got to execute that crossover step to get a get the most out of your jump. Jason did. And there's that fastball inside from Degrom, and there's another terrible throw to second by Darno. So Jason's in double digits with stolen bases, and Tommy Lastella with another big cheer with his friends and family at the ballpark tonight. He had a hit last night. I asked him, at, said, "What time did the party break up last night? About sunrise?" <laughs> he left very hard. He said, "No." <laughs> Can't wipe the smile off their faces, can you? Rightfully so. Tommy told us that by the time the weekend's done, he'll have had about 150 friends, family, little league coaches here. But luckily, he said he doesn't have to pay for all the tickets. Right. Well, how about this? How about the fact that coincidentally, I mean, he was talking about how his family was all. Yankee fans. His dad was a Yankee fan. What better number for your son to wear if you're a Yankee fan than number seven? Two balls and a strike. Hayward's going to try to steal third. The throw to David Wright is high. 
Looks like the Braves are going to try to run at will against Darno. Love it. Make it easier for that hitter to get you in. Pulls a third baseman out of position if it was a hittable pitch. Just a matter of staying on the bag, and he did. Ground ball to the right side could tie the game. Costello fought off a tough pitch. Sure did. Remember, Freeman was in this same spot, and he elevated on him. He went upstairs with a fastball and actually on two pitches in that sequence against Freddie. Swung and missed on both. You like your odds of contact here. Tommy has proven to be for 130 big league at bats. Pretty tough strikeout, just 14. But he couldn't stop the swing that time. There was that pitch up and away to the left hand hitter. And DeGrom has four strikeouts already. Talked about this earlier that he can do that. He has the kind of fastball that he can do that with his four seamer. And already apparent that he likes to do that. Christian Bethencourt has made a very positive impression, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And I'm not sure that, um, well, none of us question his defensive ability. We've been hearing about that for years and how good he is. And there have been no surprises there. But he's had some very good at bats. Had the three hit game at home the other day. Let's see how patient he is here. He's the eighth place hitter. Tehran, the pitcher's next. Ball one strike one nothing New York on a Granderson first inning homer. Another check swing strike. This guy might be the best pitcher nobody's heard about. And that's surprising he's pitching in New York after all. He's one and five. What a good ERA. One ball, two strikes. And he went upstairs with the fastball. Plenty of hair on his head and on his heater. DeGrom has struck out five through two innings and leads one nothing. AT&T Uverse, Delta Airlines, and Ford. That train, it named it out of the legendary Choo Choo Coleman. 
here in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Where the Mets lead one to nothing off Julio Tehran, who gave up a leadoff home run to Curtis Granderson. Braves have lost their last two ball games, but as you see, Joe, on our Home Depot tools from the dugout, you like your chances anytime this guy's on the hill. When you've got a reputation for being a guy who can put an end to some of the nonsense a team might be running through, and again, a two run, two game losing streak is nothing to get all worked up about. But it's nice to know that he comes in and shuts the door on such stuff. Great numbers, 53 strikeouts and seven walks in those eight games. I was asked before the game by a member of the New York media, and they wanted to know what's been the biggest difference maker for Julio Tehran, not just from this year to last, but maybe from his rookie season to this year. What have you seen? Well, everybody's always known that he had good stuff. I, I think he's just he started trusting it last year. He started quitting. He, he quit trying to. Uh, Trick everybody went after them got more aggressive had some success and then with that success he got more competent and now he believes that he ought to be an all star he believes that he's uh, good enough to be the ace on a staff and has a very I'll say quiet competitive spirit about him. He really gets mad at himself when he makes a mistake just as he kind of. Look skyward when he made that mistake to Granderson in the first inning. He's got Tejada. Then the pitcher, then Eric Young Jr. coming up in the second inning. A little fly ball hit toward left. Upton's on the run, and he'll get there for the first out. Tejada's retired. The Mets tonight are batting their pitcher eighth. It's something they haven't done much of. In fact, when DeGrom. Faced the St. Louis Cardinals. He was the first pitcher in the history of the Mets franchise to hit any place other than ninth. Is that right? Yeah. Well, you can see good numbers. And while at Stetson, he was a, an infielder for two years, his first two years. He's an ideal guy to bat eight because he can swing the bat, and because you got a guy like Eric Young on deck who's like a second leadoff man for them tonight. Look at his numbers compared to the rest of their guys. In fact, they're starting, or not they're starting, their entire pitching staff began the season a John Smoltz like 0 for 64 <laughs> with 35 strikeouts until he got a hit. Just kidding. John, one ball, one strike. To left. And DeGrom has a one out hit. Good swing. Starts with an open stance, come back, comes back to the plate. He got a pitch slightly up that he could serve the left field. So the pitcher at first for the ninth place hitter, Eric Young. Terry Collins has his choice of Youngs to play left field. We've seen Chris out there. Tonight we see Eric. And a ball outside. Bad weather in Washington right now where the Nationals and Orioles are in a delay. We are told could see some wet stuff here around 930 Eastern time. Two balls no strikes. Five of nine so far for Julio on first pitch strikes. Well, here he is at that 30 pitch mark. Let's see if his stuff magically sharpens up. That's a good delivery. Two and one.
Christian try the ball. Well, see, there's. I think that's kind of the frustration in a nutshell. I'll get to it in a second. Instead of just going fastball in, no. Fastball away, no. Slider, no. Change up, yes. They're going through all these uh, multiple signs before they ever get to what looks like the last sign is the is the actual one they want. But they go through all of that first, and then by that by the time they get to the one they want, hitters stepping out, and they got to start over. There you go. That was simple, right there. And the pitch was right there for a full count now. Rob, the pitcher at first. One out. See, there's another case of Julio expecting perfection, and he got a strike call, but he wasn't happy with. Where it was located. In the air to right. Jason on a sprint. He gets there and makes a beautiful running catch. I saw Jason briefly today before the game, and I told him how much I'm enjoying watching him play. And if you're a Braves fan and you're not enjoying watching Jason Hayward do what he's been doing in right field, then I don't know what's wrong with it. And he's been scuffling to get hits. It's cost him a lot of points on his average, but it has not affected the way he goes about his business in right field. And he saved Julio there on a hanging breaking ball. Remember Gary Maddox? Yes. Harry Callis, the late great voice of the Phillies, used to say of him, terrific center fielder with the Phillies. Two thirds of the world is covered by water, the rest is covered by Gary Maddox. Might be saying the same thing about Jason Hayward and right for the Braves. You're right. Really pick your poison. Do you want to face Granderson or do you want to face Daniel Murphy, who's on deck? Three and zero. He was trying to throw a strike there. He's not. Was not trying to pitch around it. But now let's see. Three and zero. Be careful. Likely Grandison has a green light. He did. Broke his bat and he dumps one into right in front of Jason. Granderson's two for two. First and second for Murphy now with two outs. A man that couldn't buy a hit in April is getting him by the bushel basket full of late. Fastball in. As bad as you said, but he's on fire right now. Murphy struck out in the first. We saw the Arizona Diamondbacks in Atlanta. We mentioned they had scouts watching Aaron Hill and Martin Prado play against the Braves. Published reports in New York this morning said Toronto has a scout here watching Daniel Murphy too. I'm told that Toronto has a pretty healthy farm system. They may be able to deal from a position of strength there. That's what the Mets are looking for. There have been talk about extending Murphy's contract here in New York as well over the last couple of weeks, but nothing yet has transpired. Of course, the trade deadline without waivers, July 31st. 
Two on, two out, two strike pitch for Murphy. Fly ball left center field. That's going to get down and roll to the fence. DeGrom scores. Here comes Davidson around third. He's going to score without a throw. Murphy doubles home two more, and the Mets jump out 3 0. That's hitting them where they ain't. The broken bat flare by Granderson. And now this fastball belt high again. Splits the gap in left center with Granderson, the trailing runner from first base. Certainly fast enough to come all the way around to score. Murphy has been having real trouble with that breaking ball down and in especially. Got him to chase one this at bat, but then got a cookie to pick on there, that fastball. Three runs on five New York hits. And the inning continues for David Wright. And started by the base hit by the pitcher. And let's not forget that hanging breaking ball to Eric Young that was flagged down by Hayward. Strike one for David Wright. We talk about fastball location a lot, Chip, and how important it is. And tonight's a good example of that for Julio because he's been so good that just when you're off that much, especially when you elevate it a little bit for big league hitters, tough to get out. Right says one into left. Murphy around third. Upton loads up. His throw toward the plate. It's going to be late. David Wright singles on Murphy. A big inning for the Mets, who now lead four to nothing. Come on, Dan. Good night, David. That looked like a slider. But again, not a Julio type slider. Yeah, just kind of. Almost looked like a cutter that didn't cut on the outside third, and he hit it off the end of the bat, which is the only reason Murphy was able to come home and score because it took a while to get to Justin to have a chance to throw him out. This is the most runs that Tehran has given up in a game since June 11th when he allowed seven in Colorado. He allowed 10 earned runs the entire month of May. And seven earned runs in March and April combined. So this is a very unusual start for Julio Tehran tonight. He ended with the seventh best ERA in baseball, the fifth best in the National League. And there's obvious steam coming out of his ears, but he's got to regroup here and try to get out of this inning. And then fire some zeros up on the scoreboard to give his offense a chance. And it's not going to be easy against DeGrom. We've already seen that. Lucas Dudo walked in the first inning. This is one of those classic strength versus strength matchups. As Joe mentioned, Tehran very effectively with the ball down due to hits the ball down very well. Yeah, typically, but Julio's had a hard time getting the ball down tonight. In the air to right. That's in for a hit. I could have sworn it, that Bethancourt was giving a sign for Julio to throw over, to throw to first. And instead he came home. And watch the thumb of Bethancourt. That, that's throw over to first. And instead, and it looked, you know, he took a look over there. And I think Bethancourt was like, 
What, uh, what are you doing? And after the hit, Julio took off his glove and was walking between the mound all the way down to the third base line. Maybe asking himself, what am I doing? His bullpen's going to get to work here. Three runs on five Mets hits. And Ligaris is the batter. And the eighth man to hit in the inning. Gets loose. Seven hits and four runs in two innings can certainly cause you to lose your focus, but uh, combined with some of his own irritation with himself, I think he is really scuffling right now to regroup. The three pitches to Lagaris have just been like a thrower and not a pitcher. It's three and one. Or no next for New York. Generous call, perhaps. Wow. Julio will take it. Full count. Very generous. It was coming back. It didn't look like it came back enough. Let's see. PNC pitch tracks on Fox tracks. PNC Bank pitching performance on Fox tracks tells us that was a strike. That's fouled off the catcher. Get this out right here to stay in the game. Braves are down four nothing. And he got it. Told you Lagares wants to swing the bat. He may have just swung a ball four. New York scores three on five hits. And Jacob DeGrom enjoys a four nothing lead after two.
deep hole to dig out of with hard thrower Jacob DeGrom on the hill for New York. It's the Mets for Atlanta nothing. Well, get some innings out of him. Help him help himself really by going back out there and see if he can get back on track. This is certainly not Julio like. And with what has been a trend for the Mets all year. No lead is safe with their pitching staff. They've lost a ton of games this year when they have led. And nearly coughed one up last night. David Wright gives ground at third and makes the toss across in time for out number one. So Tehran's retired to start the inning. Here's B.J. Upton. B.J. singled, stole a base, took third on a throwing error, and was stranded in the Braves' first. B.J. now with hits in 13 of the last 14 games. He's let off. Braves are 10 and 3 since he's moved to the number one spot on the lineup card. You like that? Murphy couldn't snare it. And Upton gets a top spin roller to bounce into center field. And he's two for two. What well, looked like he picked that right off the ground, too. Because it was low, he was able to put a lot of top spin on it. So here's Appleton Simmons and Tom. He's done good work hitting behind a hot hitting B.J. Upton. Yeah, there's no one that appreciates that hit more than Andrelton Simmons. He says, when I move, when I hit behind B.J., they don't want him to steal a base, so I get more fastballs. Those are his spray chart for the season. He's a dead pull hitter, but since he moved in the two hole, everything is balanced. He said, when B.J. gets on base, I can bunt him over. I can play small ball. I use more of the field since June 1st. As a matter of fact, his ground balls are evenly distributed from left to right. His line drives are still going left, but for the most part, all of his fly balls are going to center field or right field. Having B.J. on base and Freddie Freeman behind him has produced more fastballs and made Andrelton Simmons a better hitter. That's a real catbird seat, Tom. This ball chopped toward right at third. He'll flip the second for long and a short Handled by Duda beautifully. Turns into a double play. Five, four, three, and out. Go the Braves in the top of the third inning. It's 4 nothing New York. Game two of our series in Flushing. for Braves country to uh, turn out to vote for Justin Upton to get him into the Major League All-Star game with the final vote. 
Check our Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. He is behind Justin Morneau, who's getting great support from his former state. The Twins obviously hosting the All-Star uh, game. And uh, Anthony Rizzo of Chicago. So I'm going to call out a couple of counties in Braves country who just aren't performing right now. You folks in Panola, Mississippi, you've got Casey McGee leading the vote. Capaya, Mississippi, Anthony Rendon. Loud in Tennessee, Justin Mon Morneau. It's not going to cut it. Hey, credit to Butts County, Georgia, though. 100% of the votes going for Justin Upton. And Lincoln County, Montana, 100%. He's got votes from the West Texas town of El Paso all the way out to the islands of Hawaii, leading many of those counties. I love that, Tom. I love it. Keep us posted on all that. we got to get those counties in Mississippi cracking. What about our sister city of Tomahawk, Wisconsin? I bet the voting there has got to be... I would hope so. Terrific, too. As Travis Darnot leads off the Mets third. And another base hit. Julio's got to find some magic somehow, some way. He has been hit very hard in his first two plus innings. Yeah, I don't know who this guy is, or what he did with Julio, but he's not the guy that's been pitching for the Braves lately. Dating back to June 16th, four starts ago, eight innings, one run against Philadelphia. Washington, seven innings, three runs. Philadelphia, seven innings, one earned run, and seven innings, one run against the Mets his last time out. That's not the guy we're watching tonight. Ruben Tejada flied out his last time up. That led off the second inning. And a scorcher over the glove of Chris Johnson, who is even with the bag for Tejada. Chris Johnson didn't have enough room to react to this. Fastball, that one was down a little bit, but scorched. So, how do you want to play to crop? He's got a hit tonight and scored the second Mets run. From Terry Collins' standpoint, I'll be shocked if he's not bunting because they can't get enough runs, as you pointed out, with the leads they've blown. He's had a wheel play on. Chris Johnson will give the signs to the infield. He's not using the signs from Stetson. Mr. Grom's going to know those. That's right. <laughs> Good point. A couple of hatters squaring off in game two tonight. And he's swinging. Freeman to second. And the throw back to first is in time. And a beautiful double play started by Freddie Freeman, and no doubt. About Hamilton Simmons holding the bag at second on that play. This is the hardest double play to turn, but here's one of the reasons why. Look where Freddie had to go to get back to the bag. And what happens, look at first base. Well, you can't see Tommy Lastella, but he had to get out of the way. Tehran was hustling over there to cover first if he needed to, so you got three guys within about 10 feet that can all get in the way, and Freddie said, no, nope, I'll take it. And everybody was converging on the bag, and I'm not sure if Andleton wondered which one do I throw it to. I'll just throw it to the bag, and somebody hopefully will be there. Good play. A hanger, and Young rips it into right field. That hurts. Darno scores. And with two outs in the third inning, every single Met has at least one hit tonight. And they have 10 as a team. It's a 5 nothing game. Man, did he telegraph that pitch? Yeah, it was as if he told him what was coming. His upper body didn't follow through. He threw it very upright. He 
Second hard hit ball for Young, first hit. Two for two night for Curtis Granderson. Homer singled and scored two runs. The Mets continue to give the Braves trouble. This is the 11th game head to head with New York. The Braves are six and four in series play so far this year. What time is that rain supposed to get here? 9:30. Still a ways away. They're going to four corners. Quick move. There's a story in the paper today from Terry Collins who implied that he thought Julio Tehran's move to first base was bordering on a balk. And it was, I think his word was improper, or what he was quoted as saying. And I'm not sure what his objection is. Maybe that because his speed are so quick, you think that he's somehow leading the hitter into leaning to the right. Because Julio starts his left, his front shoulder tucks it in a little bit. But he's picked off three Mets in the last two years. Including Young. A ball one strike. Let's keep an eye on Julio's velocity here. A hanging breaking ball for the hit to Young. A slider and then a sinker at 87. Three and zero on Granderson last time up. It was the first couple of pitches were breaking balls down and in. He broke his bat on a fastball. Three and zero. Another breaking ball. You can understand the reluctance to throw a fastball to this guy. He's hit a couple of them out in this series already. That back foot breaking ball, if you don't get it there for a left handed hitter, that is not quite putting it on the tee, but pretty close. Popped up into shallow left. Nothing hard to Granderson in that sequence. And the Mets add to their lead with a run on three third inning hits. Here's who's coming up presented by Delta. The Mets have jumped out to a big lead.
things. The Mets with five runs on ten hits. Julio Tehran has been hit very, very hard in game two of the series. So, Braves country, let's see if we can get some offense going here in the fourth inning. Let's see if we can bump up the vote totals for Justin Upton as he hopes to head to next week's All-Star Game in Minneapolis. All you have to do is go to MLB.com backslash vote or text N5 to 89269. Voting ends Thursday at 4 Eastern, so vote now. The latest voting tabulations we had showed Justin Upton to be in third place among those five final vote candidates. And hey, you folks in Butts County, Georgia, we're proud of you. Keep it up. 100% for Justin. We always know we can count on you. Freeman Upton and Hayward in the fourth. Jacob DeGrom, a big lead. And he can go to work. Roller out second. Murphy's got it. One out. This ball is this ballpark has fooled us the first two games. I think a couple of balls that the Braves and frankly the Mets have hit that didn't go that we thought maybe could have or should have. Well, I love what Justin did. He was ready for that fastball in his first time up. He struck out three times against Degrom in Atlanta, and all were in. Tied him up inside, and he was sitting on that first pitch and almost hit it out. I thought he had hit it out. Ball one strike. DeGrom has not won a home start in the big leagues. Every Met has at least one hit so far in the game, and they've given him five early runs. Inning. Target was away, but the pitch was in, and Justin was ready for anything in. What you didn't see there was a back Eric Young all the way up to the wall. Looked like it might go out. DeGrom in support is really rare in his previous five starts. The Mets have scored a grand total of 10 runs. And the high fastball has been his best friend all game long. Six strikeouts, his first since the second inning. Two outs. They are putting together in New York a power. Packed pitching staff. Struck out eight against the Braves in that last start in five innings, his season high, career high, 11 in six and a third innings at Philadelphia. Got a no decision in that game. When you think about this kid, you think about Harvey, you think about Wheeler, you think about the potential of Noah Syndergaard, who's really not having a great year in the minor leagues this year. Dylan G comes back tomorrow. He gives the Braves fits. Jonathan Neese is a tough customer for the Braves to handle. Line drive by Hayward to left. He's two for two. I don't know if he meant to do that or was trying to do that or not, but it's a great sign for Jason to go the other way. I thought last night he had an outstanding at bat when Edge and 
threw one to the backstop right over the top of his helmet. Backdoor slider, short cutter almost that he stayed with. But given that this is where Jason got hit in the face last year and having one whistle that close to his helmet last night, for him to hang in there and, and still get a base hit later in the at bat against Edgen was very impressive. Swing and a miss by Chris Johnson. Rumor has it that Eric Campbell, who was playing first base, after that sequence took place, was talking with Jason and said, Hey, wait, why do you wear the face guard? He wasn't aware hmm. of the history of Hayward and Nice here in New York. That is the answer why Jason wears that protective face gear. Right now, the Braves are swinging at the invisible ball from Jacob DeGrom. It's because of his fastball. I know the, the swings and misses, or the swing and miss there was a breaking ball, but everybody's trying to respect that 94 95 fastball. So when there is a breaking ball, they've already started their swing, they've already committed. He put that ball right where Darno wanted it. And 97. Almost effortlessly. One ball, two strikes. Pitch that seven strikeouts. The Braves are done in the top of the fourth inning. DeGrom and the Mets still lead by five. Fitting still 5 0 New York. Tehran is back out of the mound for the Braves with the 2 3 4 hitters coming up for New York. There's a look at Bobby Abreu. He's a member of this 25 man Mets roster and he's one of two active players with seven or more career seasons of 20 homers and 20 or more stolen bases. There are only two active players that have done a 2020 year in the big leagues. Seven times. Seven times. Name wow. the other player to do that. Ooh. Gotta be an old guy, right? Yeah. Wouldn't you think? Does active include disabled list active or do they have to be Oh I, I you were thinking of Prince Fielder or yeah, right. <laughs> Exactly. How'd you know? I was thinking about for call. If we had that many. 
Derek Jeter. He had seven seasons of 20 or more. Might. To third. Chris Johnson will handle that. Ball off Murphy's bat, and there's the first out of the inning. Second time in four frames that uh, Tehran's gotten the leadoff man. He's got to give the Braves some innings. His spots do third in the fifth. We'll see if he continues beyond the bottom of the fourth. Jimmy Rollins comes to mind. This guy. Right. Hey, forget about all the stolen bases he's put mm -hmm. together. Swing and a miss. David Wright first got to the big leagues in 2004. It seems like yesterday, doesn't it? Played in 69 games that year. Then in 2005, at 27 homers. Knocked in a hundred runs for the first time in his big league career. They just need him to stay on the field. Such a vital part of their ball club and their offense. There was a Julio Tehran slider. Good at the middle of the plate and it break away from him. He doesn't stay on top of it when he gets under it a little bit. Those are the little loopers like the one that Eric Young has hit hard twice. Full count now for right. the other way you talked about the importance of making adjustments for hitters seeing a pitcher in back to back starts I'd say the Mets have certainly done that tonight they've pounded out 11 hits already well they have Chip but I and I'll give them most of the credit right but they've had some help tonight from Julio who's not been able to, to locate he's he's been up his breaking ball has been there about one out of every four. Just one of those nights for him. Duda's gotten on twice. He's walked in single tonight. Still raining in Washington, where the Orioles and Nationals hope to get started soon. Brave start play tonight, one half game ahead of the Nats. The Marlins are the third place team in the division. Miami is in Arizona later on. The Mets are in fourth place, nine games back, and the Phillies are in fifth, 11 games out. He's made some news today. They said Cliff Lee will come back and pitch after the All Star break for Philadelphia. And Ruben Amaro also signed a former Brave to a minor league contract today. Remember Jojo Reyes? He's now a member of the Phillies organization. I do remember him. I had no idea he was still pitching anywhere. Stairs to Lucas Duda. Three balls and a strike. Could he have been in the Mexican League by chance? Could have been. Don't know.
pull a string and Duda didn't get it. One of the best change ups he's thrown all night right there. Getting some work in, or if something's run sideways for DeGrom. Runner goes, the pitch is high, ball four. Duda walks for a second time in the game. And it appears that's the end of the line for Julio Tehran. So Tehran's first start since being named an all-star went exactly how he hoped it would not. A rare clinker for Julio tonight. He departs allowing five runs on 11 hits and the two Mets runners aboard are his responsibility too. After three and a third innings, 11 hits, couple of walks, and a home run allowed to Curtis Granderson. And here you see our Mazda game summary as New York continues to hit here in the home fourth. Now, some early runs for DeGrom, who was very impressive in Atlanta, and tonight, so far, throwing a four hit shutout. Granderson got him off and running with a leadoff homer in the first. Now David Hale's out there and he has not pitched since he made that start in Philadelphia on the 28th of June, which today would be the 10th day since then. Boy, he was outstanding in winning his third game in that start. Five innings and four hit ball. Only gave up one run. One and two with a 391 ERA in relief for David. Looking after Lagares here with two on and one out. Lagares singled and struck out his first two trips to the plate. And a strike going one. Toward third, Chris Johnson, Estella, a hesitation at the second base bag, and that cost him a chance to get Lagaris. Braves do force Duda, but rights to third, Lagaris at first with two outs. This was going to have to be perfect because it was not sharply hit to Chris Johnson, and you can see the double clutch there by Tommy but because it was kind of slow developing it. It was going to have to be perfect to get him.
Travis Darno one for two with a run scored. And Hale a strike. Braves bullpen in July, as we've told you, has been terrific. Allowed just three earned runs in their first 15 innings this month. And down five, they hope to allow none the rest of the way tonight. Braves nine game winning streak, the bullpen's ERA was .40. Great work by all. To the right side, and Tommy's got it. Quick release, and Hale came in and did a nice job. He retires the Mets easily in the home fourth. We go to the fifth. Baseball is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. We found out where JoJo Reyes was playing. Told you the former Brave was signed to a minor league deal by the Phillies earlier today. JoJo was playing in Korea. Okay. He had pitched in AAA with Indianapolis in 2012, was in the Angels system in 2013. They released him so he could sign with Korea. And the Phillies looking for pitching help. Taking a flyer on Jojo Reyes. So Jacob DeGrom back to work. He has struck out seven men in his first four innings, including Tommy Lestello, who whiffed in the second. So we have to assume that Dana Evelyn was just getting some work in. A lot of strike ones and a lot of strike threes so far for Jacob. That's off the plate. Two and one your count. Waves have to find a way to solve the Mets. These guys have made life tough on Atlanta the last couple of years. One of the things John Smoltz talked about with respect to DeGrom's lower half is his front foot. That it flies a little open, a little to the first base side of straight to the plate. And he thought that that posed a weaker position for him in his delivery. Not that he wanted to throw across his body. And he thought it caused his hips to open up a little soon. And as hard as he throws, I'd hate to think if he could improve on that. <laughs> yeah. That was his point. Should have come to 
at times. Matt DeGrom's build, 6'4", 180 pounds. He is 26. Matt puts on another 10 or 15, maybe 20 pounds of muscle. Here's a good look at that stride to the plate. Just a little left of center. He's already a handful. He makes a 62nd pitch. And he missed badly with it. It's full count. He was in AAA when he got called up and was 4 0 at Las Vegas with a 2.5 ERA. Another strikeout. That's eight. Nice changeup. Pitch was up too, but because of the change in speed at 83 and a good delivery on it, that's what fooled Tommy. Christian struck out his first time. Pops one out of play for a strike. Talk a lot about how hitters want to try to eliminate a pitch. Doesn't look like there's anything to eliminate yet, huh? Well, and he's got a five run lead, so he can use his whole arsenal early in the count, late in the count. Outside corner, a cold strikeout. PNC pitch tracks another change up. Well, it did look low, but at the bottom of the zone, according to our pitch tracks from PNC. So Mike Everett got it right. David Hale's the hitter. He's one for 13 this year at the plate with an RBI and six strikeouts. Jeff Porter was on David Hale today. He's cracking me up. I saw David and said, Hey, Princeton, what's going on? Jeff Porter said, Princeton? He said, I call him JC. I hear the stuff comes out of his mouth. It's got to be a junior college, not, not <laughs> Ivy League. <laughs> that sounds like Bubba. One two pitch is cut on a miss. DeGrom has struck out the side. He's done that twice in the game. He has double digits in whiffs through five innings at home tonight.
or Atlanta area Mazda dealers. Georgia Power, The Home Depot, and Zaxby's Indescribably Good. It's 5 nothing. bottom of the fifth inning. Jacob DeGrom has gotten a big lead, and he has struck out 10 Braves so far tonight. Now it's time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag South Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. That's brought to you by AT&T. Well, whatever happens tonight, we just don't want any fans to fall asleep in the stands. Because of, oh, did you yeah. read about that fan in New York that yeah. or in uh, at Yankee Stadium yeah. that's suing ESPN and a couple of broadcasters for dogging him for falling asleep. That's why I said these are, I mean, maybe the handsomest crowd I think I've ever seen at a major league game. Wouldn't you agree, Joe? I mean, look at that. Absolutely. Beautiful couple. The Stella family, I mean, they're Braves fans. They're not going to be bothered by anything we say. Well, I just keep eating. One way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then we say, well, those must be the all you can eat seats here at City Field. <laughs> yeah. As uh, David Hale goes back to work. He's got uh, Hada, DeGrom, and then Eric Young. Jerry Collins was singing the praises of Tejada before this series started. He got a big hit. In their recent series that against the Pirates were drove in a winning run, and he was talking about him about him being a good line drive hitter. And he said, and he was quick to say, he's got some power, but he's better when he's hitting hard ground balls and line drives. And certainly that's what he's done last night to win the game, and today with that line shot off the glove of Chris Johnson. Are the Mets seeing the Ruben Tejada they hope to see from opening day last year? Yeah. This year now? Yeah, I think probably so much so that um, it might quell any thoughts they had of going out and getting someone else for next year. One two pitch. Routed toward third. Chris will handle that hop. Well, first, you might recall earlier in the season there was some talk that the Mets might somehow, some way, find enough change in the sofa cushions to go out and get Stephen Drew, who was a free agent, and obviously didn't happen. And so Tejada is the guy, and playing pretty well for the Mets right now. Nice cheer for Degrom, who's put the ball in play twice. He singled, scored, and he's hit into a double play. Grom has six hits as a starting pitcher. The rest of the Mets staff has seven for the year. Mets are on their way to winning their fourth game out of their last five. That's a stretch after they got swept in Atlanta. And in particular, the, the first game of that series when they Made three errors in the eighth inning and blew a game, and the Braves went on to sweep. I said that to say this: they are only nine games under 500, halfway through the season, a little over. And the way they have lost, with so many leads, I think it's 25 games they've lost where they actually led in the ball game. It's a tribute to that guy, Terry Collins. To second, Listella. That's the pitcher. Two out. To Terry Collins and his staff. To not let the season slip into a real pit. You know, losing the way they've been losing, it would be easy to just throw in the towel and say, we just, we can't, we don't have enough players. We can't keep, we can't stop the bleeding here on these types of games. But he does not tolerate that. And you better be ready to go to war every night. And that's why they've hung in there. Well, let's just do the math. He said 25 games. Let's say the Mets. Won 13 of those 25. In other words, held 13 leads. Mm -hmm. Their record would be 53 and 36. That would lead the division. Yeah. 
And again, that this was a club that Sandy Alderson had talked about, Terry Collins had talked about in spring training. Hey, let's let's get to 90 wins. I mean, 90 wins might win the division in the National League East. We have to get very hot to do that. We have to win 50 more games to get to 90. And Simmons is short. It's another ground ball from David Hale. Well, the way they played in Atlanta, it looked like the season was really slipping away. They've recovered. Celebrate the United States Marines at Turner Field in a special pregame ceremony Saturday, July 19th, when the Braves take on their NL East rivals, the Phillies. The Braves will wear their special red military jerseys, which will be autographed and auctioned off after the game at Braves.com slash charity auctions. To benefit United Military Care, visit Braves.com slash tickets for more. BJ was two for two until that swing. He'll pop up to David Wright at third. There's the first out here in the top of the Atlanta sixth. Andrelton has struck out and has been doubled up. Snapped a streak of four straight strikeouts for DeGrom. Saying Bull Durham strikeouts are fascist. Let him put the ball in play. <laughs> Share the wealth a little bit. He has been extremely impressive. And as you see, much more efficient. Joe mentioned he threw 110 pitches in five innings down in Atlanta. His first ever appearance against the Braves. Here he is into the sixth inning and has thrown just 73 pitches. Including the 10 strikeouts. Adds it to the seats to the right side foul. Was it his game where in the first inning he was approaching 40 pitches yes. and still hadn't given up a run? I think it was 37 pitches. Let me check the book real quick. Yes, 37 pitches in the first inning, and it was the Chris Johnson two out double with the bases loaded. Right at the ship. I mean, in some ways, that inning was kind of like the ninth inning last night when they, the Mets sent six guys to the plate and they all reached base and didn't score. It's really been role reversal in this game. It was Julio really Turan that faced DeGrom on July 2nd. He went seven innings, a four hit, one run ball. Tonight, DeGrom has had the, the better run.
little tapper over the mound. Murphy, bare hand, a bunt to first and a pretty play. Very nice play on the bare hand. And again, as Lucas Duda at first base, when this happens, you got to be ready for a sizzler coming your way in, in any direction, and he handled it. That was our Zaxby's indescribably good play. And Rob Zandleton of an infield hit. So that's a play you know DeGrom appreciates. He played third and short at Stetson University his first two years as a college player. He didn't convert to the pitching staff until his junior season. It's pretty amazing. Well, it may have been one of those situations where at shortstop he already had a very good arm and was like Andrelton Simmons showing it off. And somebody decided maybe he'd be better suited to be on the mound. But we'll never know about the offensive part as a major league infielder, but from a pitching standpoint, <laughs> he's on his way. Yeah, he is. He's an eighth round pick. And a shot to right by Freddie Freeman, who continues his good work against the Mets. Freddie, a one for three game. That ought to put him over 300. Get him pretty close. It gives him a seven game hitting streak. 93 mile an hour fastball. Try to run it in on him. Not today. Not the way Freddie's swinging right now. Try to make it come back over the inside corner. Freddie was on it. Line down the third base line and foul. And out of play, steal rank one. Wow, wild game in Milwaukee. The Brewers led the Phillies 5 1 in the second. It's now 6 5 Phillies. See? Miller Park. See, come back through that there. This guy's got as good a fastball, I think, as we've seen all year. It's got good life to it, and, and he, he uses it in the right places. He's throwing his two seamer, trying to run the ball down and into some of the right handed hitters, but then he can go upstairs with it. We said at the very beginning, he can elevate. He tried to again. Told he has thrown 32 pitches tonight with a velocity of 95 miles an hour or better. Well, I don't know what the rest of the game holds for him, but it's hard to say that when you pitch in New York, this is a coming out party, but this may be the one that puts him on the map because he's got ugly numbers. He's one in five, but his ERA is a very good 377. He's 0 and 3 at home, but he's got an ERA of 2.49 coming in. It's lower than that now. He's 0 and 5 in night games. I told you before tonight's game, they'd scored a total of 10 runs in five games that he started. He's had five to play with, and looks like a different guy, certainly from what we saw back in Atlanta. Right. Well, he was forced to really pitch in Atlanta after giving up the three, and he's hooked up with Tehran, who was on that night, and he had to be very sharp for the rest of his time out there, which was another four innings, and didn't give up any more runs. Good at bat here by Justin. Bad.
Good block by Darno. And the count two and two. Still time to vote for Justin Upton for the All Star game. The Alpharetta, Johns Creek, Roswell, Peachtree City, Milton precincts have some work to do. You only have until 4 o'clock Thursday. Boy, he spoiled a pitch there that might have been a ball. I'm not sure how he got to that. Just covered it. Sets him up to bust him in now after reaching for that one, and they're going to move the target in. He was ready. We understand Tom Hart's got a voting update for Justin Upton. Yeah, the northeastern most county in the continental United States, Aroostock, Maine. Justin's covering that county and he's covering three of the four counties in Hawaii. And that ball is shot into right field by Upton. And on his way to third is Freddie Freeman. So the Braves with a first and third opportunity. And Tom, that ought to get him a couple of counties in North Carolina right there. That's Ric Flair territory right there. Woo. What an at bat. Tenth pitch of the at bat. And again, they came in on him. And he was fighting all the way, and Justin got a base hit. By the way, did you see the other, I'm sorry, Joe. Did you see the other day? The Nature Boy was at Cool Ray Field. I did. With the uh, Gwinnett Braves. Took pictures in the locker room. That had to be a thrill. Would be for me. Right? Yeah. How about the Mark Bowman Day coming That's up? That's right. I forgot to mention cool that Ray. last night. Mark Bowman, the fine beat writer for the Braves on MLB.com. The Gwinnett Braves are sponsoring Mark Bowman Day on July 17th at Cool Ray Field. Mark's going to throw out a ceremonial first pitch, answer questions, cover the game. And he's a, a great guy. I hope you get a chance to spend some time with Mark. And a good writer. Nice for him. So the Braves a threat here with two on and two out. This is still a very manageable game. A long one here would make things very interesting. As Jason Hayward has two of the Braves six hits. Right man right time. Outside. Well that was a good trip to the mound by Dan Worth and their pitching coach after a 10 pitch at bat. He kind of goes out. To kind of slow things down and let the Grom catch his breath a little bit. See if it helps. Nice stop there by Darno. Jason's gotten back on the beam with a couple of knocks tonight. One funny one and one slash to left. And again, they can, their outfield continues to play very shallow. All of a sudden now DeGrom's having some two out trouble back to back hits now a three one count. Last time DeGrom saw Johnson with the bases loaded it didn't work out well for him. He walked two in Atlanta none tonight. Hot shot. And to the is right. Robbed Hayward of a third hit. Hayward hit it right on the button, but David Wright broke Atlanta's heart with a diving stop. Two stranded in the sixth, still 5 nothing Mets.
National League All-Star to vote JF is or text N5 from your mobile device to 89269. Vote against at 4 Eastern on Thursday, July 10th. Send Justin to the All-Star game. Vote now at Braves.com or text N5 to 89269. Did you read the fine print down there in the bottom of the promo? This message brought to you by the Atlanta Braves and the committee for an all-Braves All-Star team. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Ground ball right side. La Stella and Granderson played perfectly. Tell you what, David Hale is a ground ball inducing machine in relief tonight. He came on for Julio Tehran in the fourth inning, and they are beating the ball to death right into that grass. And six ground outs. Six straight. And sometimes for a guy that is a sinker baller who gets ground balls, and he's had that kind of rest 10 days, sometimes that's not the best medicine for him. Might be too strong, but not so. He's pitching great. Here's Murphy, a two run double in the second, made it a three, nothing game. There might be two paths for Justin Upton to participate in the All Star festivities. One is by earning the final fan vote, the other might be he could be selected to participate as one of the National League's home run derby participants. Both the National and American League home run derby. Teams were announced today. Each will have one more participant named on Thursday as well. Troy Tulowitzki is the captain of the National League team. Jose Bautista of Toronto is the American League captain. And, uh, and they're both going to participate or just oversee? Uh, that question. I'm like Ryder Cup captain. Yeah, I'm guessing they're going to want to swing back. Did I read that Mike Trout withdrew his name from any consideration for yeah. that? He is not on the AL team. The home run derby will take place next Monday night. The National League team Tulowitzki, Yasiel Puig, Giancarlo Stanton, and Todd Frazier. As Murphy scalds one to deep center. Upton on the run, still going back. It's over his head, off the base of the wall. And Murphy has another double. Twenty-two doubles for the Mets All-Star. And he'll be in scoring position for David Wright. Speed pitch, first one that David's gotten up, but it stayed in the ballpark. And BJ able to corral it, keep it from getting by him. It might have led to a triple. The American League Home Run Derby participants, as you see, David Wright's good night tonight. Jose Batista of the Blue Jays. Nathan Court couldn't handle that. Murphy will move up. That should be a pass ball. It is. Good movement. That sinker was really moving on him. BI chance now for David Wright. He already has one of those in the game. He brought home Murphy. Jonas Cespedes, Adam Jones, and Brian Dozier of the Twins will try to homer for the American League. And yes, you're right. Mike Trout, Nelson Cruz, and Miguel Cabrera all passed on the opportunity to hit for the American League. Fields in for Atlanta. Edwin Encarnacion's hurt. Victor Martinez is hurting. And Brandon Moss has a bad ankle. He may have to go to the disabled list. So that's why the American League squad is made up the way it is. The shame for the Braves is I think they were hoping Evan Gaddis would be able to sure. participate. Mm -hmm. Ground ball right to Simmons. 
No RBI for right. Infield in, save Hale will run there. Two outs. Well, that's what he needed. Another ground ball. One more would help. Yeah, I think the injury to Evan cost him a spot on the All Star team. Devin Mazarocco is having a great year for the Reds. I mean, he's been under the radar in the first half of the season, but he's got really good numbers, and congratulations to him on being the second catcher. But I have a feeling Evan Gaddis might have been that guy had he been healthy. We did see Evan earlier tonight go out for warm ups and play catch a little bit with Julio Tehran. That's an encouraging sign. Remember, Gaddis has been told after that epidural for the bulging disc, no athletic activity at all. I mean, stretching was it. He couldn't even jog. But Freddy Gonzalez before the game apparently said that Gaddis in the next week or so might be ready to begin. Working his way back up to a rehab stint and get back behind the plate. In the air to center, Upton turned the wrong way and that cost him. That's over his head and up against the fence. Murphy scores easily and Duda stands at second with an RBI hit, his 45th RBI. A sinker that didn't sink enough. And when DJ turned to his left, that slowed him down enough that by the time he recovered, it was really hit hard and over his head. So Duda now with 45 runs batted in, and the Mets are pulling away here in the sixth. Six to nothing, your score. In the air to right, Hayward on the run will get there, and that retires the side. A run on a pair of doubles for the Mets. We head to the seventh. It's all New York in game two. Jacob DeGrom pitching himself a darn good ball game. Six hit shutout through six. For tomorrow night. You're right about Dylan G's four and four lifetime a 295 ERA against the Braves. And I think a couple of those losses may have been his most recent outings against them. Yeah, he lost a 2 1 game last June at Turner Field. So it's not like when the Braves have beaten him, it's been a 9 0 washout.
tonight. It's a six nothing whitewashing by Jacob DeGrom. And Chris Johnson with a good start. He hits one to right center field for a base hit. We'll never know, but boy, that play David Wright made on Jason Hayward may have been kind of a, at least from a stress standpoint, a game saver for the Mets because that was headed for the corner. Couple of strikeouts for Tommy Lostella tonight. I know I've said this a couple of times about the Mets. His bullpen will start to work. Our old friend Buddy Carlisle loosening up. So happy for Buddy. There's a strike to Tommy. The draft is what the draft is. You really don't know what you're going to get. You Make your selections and hope that you can project where these players will fit in at the major league level. The Mets had an opportunity a couple of years ago to as Tommy shoots one toward the left and makes the catch. What a play! Well, Jacob DeGrom can't complain about any defense tonight because, or lack of defense, because they have made some terrific plays for him. Great catch. That was either going to be an out or a triple. That is a picture perfect definition of leathered larceny by Eric Young. Picked it right off the ground. As Bethencourt bats, he's 0 for 2. And a bouncer toward third. David Wright, short hop. He will make the pack to first. He got the sure out. And two men are down. Looks like Dan Ugler grabs a bat. He'll come on to pinch hit. The point about the Mets. A couple of years ago, they drafted a kid named Brandon Nimmo, who's making his way up through the minor leagues. He's supposed to be a terrific hitter. They took him one spot ahead of Jose Fernandez of the Marlins. Think about the Mets with Harvey, Wheeler, G, DeGrom, and Jose Fernandez. That'd be a pretty good group. Yeah. So Dan Uglebats with two outs. Nice job by David Hale. Two and two thirds innings. He allowed a run on a couple of hits. Walks or strikeouts. Hacking away. David Carpenter will be next out of the shoot for the Braves. Well, if you're looking for silver linings, at least the Mets haven't outscored Germany yet. <laughs> Man, I don't know what happened there. A strike. Must have been a lot of early fast breaking. Yeah. <laughs> well. PNC pitch tracks. Just nip the bottom of the zone. Newspaper might have a great headline on the World Cup game tomorrow, so we'll let you know. Assuming we can, of course. A 
Full count pitch for Dan Ugla. Pinch hitting for David Hale. Strike three. Ugla finally earned the walk. DeGrom has struck out his 11th man. That matches his career high. We head to the seventh inning stretch. It's all Jacob DeGrom in game two. has established himself as perhaps the best defensive right fielder in all of baseball. He was at it again in the second inning. Eric Young Jr. sent this line drive towards the gap. And this is a play that is a lot more difficult than Hayward makes it look. Caught up to it right at the edge of the track. Oh, just another whole hum out. Time for our SunTrust shining moment. We go back to what is perhaps the best defensive play of Hayward's still young career. Ninth inning with Hayward in center field. Craig Kimbrell on the mound. Turner sends his shot towards a gap in left center. And he went full extension to end the game with a runner on base for the Mets. It would have been a walk-off loss. Craig Kimbrell appreciated it. And so did the folks at ESPN, by the way. He named Jason Hayward their June Defensive Player of the Month. Those two plays, great examples of what Hayward does well. On plays that he's supposed to make in the month of June he made 53 of the 55 catches he should have gotten to better than 50% of the time expected outs on plays that are expected outs less than 50% of the time he still made seven catches on that one tied for Major League Baseball lead with eight defensive runs saved in the month of June. That's great work. By Jason Hayward and whether you play him in right or center or left. <laughs> Covers an awful lot of ground and makes it look almost effortless. So David Carpenter is on for the Braves here in the home seventh. His first appearance since coming back from the disabled list. Had a couple of outings for Gwinnett on a rehab. Has not been in a game with the big club since June 16th. Had some issues with his bicep, but says he is 100% now. And the velocity bears that out. That was 96. Tell you how tonight's game has gone for the Braves by the time the third inning was over, every single Met starter, including their pitcher, had at least one hit. They scored five runs in the first three innings. Julio Tehran did not have much and was knocked out of the game in the fourth. David Hale came on, went two and two thirds innings of very good relief. A lot of ground balls, a couple of fly balls, including a double over BJ Upton's head that brought home a run. And now David Carpenter is the third Braves pitcher. Six runs on 13 hits for David Wright's Mets. No 
No run, seven hits for the Braves. And another opposite field hit. How many of those does New York have tonight? So the Braves and Mets square off two more times after tonight's ball game. Irvin Santana, Dylan G get the ball in game three. Braves live from the ballpark with Andre Aldridge and Paul Bird. Joe and I will have the play by play along with Tom Hart beginning at 7 o'clock Eastern time from City Field. Santana 3 0 lifetime against the Mets with an 086 ERA and beat them here back on April 19th. Back to back hits for the Mets against Carpenter. And that's going to be the end of the line for DeGrom. He got 11 strikeouts in seven innings. And that tied his career high. Established earlier this year against the Phillies. And no walks tonight. And 108 pitches in seven innings. He needed 110 to get through five in Atlanta. Having his best stretch as a major leaguer. He's been up several times with the Mets over the last several years. Called up from AAA on June 19th. Bethan Court with a backhand is going to fire a shot to second, and it's going to be a tie. Bethancourt lost the handle and was able to fire and nail the trail runner Tejada. What out? That was a heads up recovery. Overcooked that slider, blocked it. Had no play at third base. And then a laser down to Simmons. So no stolen base attempt. He tried to advance on the ball in the dirt. Darno takes third on the fielder's choice. Now the infield comes in for Neuenheis. And he slashes one foul out of play. So is there still a wild pitch? I would assume so. I assume so too because the guy had to get to third somehow. Mets Triple-A team is in Las Vegas. That still sounds awfully strange. All the years in Tidewater. And a line drive headed for the right field corner. It's in for a hit. Dardo scores. Newen Heiss is standing at second. And the Mets are frolicking tonight. Seven runs on 15 hits. All the hits this inning have been on fastballs. Which I know David hasn't had that much work. And this is his first work since the disabled list. But it, it just proves too that you you got to do more than just throw 95 or 96. Big league hitters, as Bobby Cox always said, they can time a jet. You got to have a little movement. You got to have some location. So a rude welcome back by the Mets for David. Seventeen hits is the Mets' season high. They're a, sh a hit shy of that. And we're only in the seventh. Last time the Mets had 17 hits in a ball game was June 22nd in Miami. Three straight hits here in the inning. And outside. 
Ball two. Little roller right side. La Stella will throw to first in time. And moving to third is Neuenheis, as young as the second out of the inning. And here's Granderson. On April 28th, Curtis Granderson was hitting a buck 29 with one homer. Since April 28th, Curtis Granderson. Has 13 homers. Granderson, who's in the first year of a four year deal with the Mets, is heating up. Three time All Star, he's won the Silver Slugger. Doesn't run as much or as effectively as he used to, but still a very talented player. He was moving pretty good on that double that Murphy did tonight. He scored from first base, and he didn't have to move very fast on this one. Let off the ball game. High fastball. That was kind of a tip of what was to come from Julio Tehran tonight. He had a hard time getting the ball down and locating, and Granderson. With another leadoff homer, his second against the Braves in two series. Carp's got it 0 2. And it's pulled foul. Curtis, a real personable guy. If you ever get a chance to meet him, he's really a terrifically nice person. He was part of TBS's postseason baseball broadcast in 2002 2008. Won an Emmy for his work as a studio analyst during that run. O2 pitch is high. One and two now. Anderson's out of Chicago. That's where we'll head next. Three games with the Cubs this weekend. It's a perfect game to try to get Carpenter some work. You don't have to put him in a high leverage situation. The Mets already have a big lead. And while you certainly want him to pitch effectively and efficiently, if he doesn't, get him some extra work in game situations. Absolutely. And, and while his fastball has been straight and hittable, he's made a couple of good pitches with his slider. That was a pretty good pitch. Anderson spoiled a couple of them. You've noticed that patch, two patches, memorial patches on the sleeves of the Mets, the microphone for Ralph Kiner, and the FC for Frank Cashin, who just passed away recently. That missed high. There's a good breaking ball. And Carpenter takes care of the Mets in the home seventh. They had a run on three hits. And we go to the eighth where the top of the Braves order will try to get something going against the Mets pen.
AT&T, mobilizing your world. And Five Hour Energy. Seven to nothing Mets after seven now. And a reminder to come celebrate the United States Marines at Turner Field in a special pregame ceremony Saturday, July 19th, when the Braves take on the Phillies. The Braves will wear their special red military jerseys, which will be autographed and then auctioned off after the game at Braves.com slash charity auctions to benefit United Military Care. Visit Braves.com slash tickets for more details. Speaking of hard chargers. How about the new pitcher for the Mets, Buddy Carlisle, former Brave. Buddy's 61 years old now. <laughs> yeah. You know, obviously he's not, but you gotta just be so happy for Buddy and be proud of him because this guy's been pitching a long time and has accumulated about three or four years in the big leagues total. And a terrific guy and a good teammate and I for one am very happy for him. This is his third game to appear in a third game for the Mets this year after coming up and down a couple of times from Vegas. He last appeared in the big leagues with the Yankees in 2011. He won a game May 31st at Philadelphia. It was his first big league win since September of 2008 nearly six years between big league victories for Buddy Carlisle who I think had a similar stretch between San Diego and the Braves. Yeah I believe you're right. But he just he never gave up. He went overseas and pitched came back. He stays up with their club the rest of the year and does a good job for them. Well, the Mets must like it because they gave him a real good pitcher's number. I mean, it isn't 44. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's. Great number. Think about it as long as he's pitched and as hard as he had to fight to get back to the big leagues, as much time as he put in to get back, every one of these pitches is just has to be very rewarding to him. And he just struck out BJ Upton. That's 12 strikeouts for the Braves offense tonight. First for Buddy Carlisle and Tom it is a great story to see this guy back in the bigs. Well the number is a little bit mind boggling 258 innings pitched in the major leagues. He made his debut in 1999 at the age of 21 in the minors. He's thrown 1,279 innings over 16 seasons. See do you have his time of service Tom because he's not even in their media guide. We have no. Uh, supplemental guide for his service time, but I don't think it's more than about three or four years. Well, I can give you the rundown of where he's pitched. He's originally a second round pick of the Reds in 96. Then he went to the Padres in a trade. Made his big league debut in August of 1999. Won one game. But he was then sold, or his contract was sold, to the Hanshin Tigers in Japan. He pitched two years there. Then was picked up by the Royals. He pitched in double A and triple A in 2003. Then to the Yankees. Then to the Dodgers in 2005. So we're getting within the last decade now. Right. I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> yeah, that Major League Service time stands at three years. And, and what's amazing, Chip, the stops that you just mentioned he was in the bigs three years after he was drafted at just 21 years old with the Padres in 99 then 2002 then five years to get back before he appeared in 10 games for the Dodgers in 05 and he's thinking okay maybe maybe I'm back in the big leagues for good didn't work out that way he went to Korea 
the Marlins the Braves I mean it's just amazing. And here he is. 36 years young. From coast to coast from hemisphere to hemisphere and pitching in the big leagues with the New York Mets and again it, if you know him you root for him. He's such a good person. I mean, how many pitchers do you know Joe. That have gone to Japan or Korea not once not twice but three times and get called back and are good enough to pitch in this league again. Yeah and. Perseveres. Just walked Simmons with one out and Freddie Freeman will greet him next. Pitched in 30 games for Vegas. Four and two, three saves, and a 2.16 ERA. Well, it's arguably with the Braves that Buddy Carlisle had the best game of his major league career. On June 5th of 2006, he gave up one hit in seven innings against the Marlins. That hit was a home run to Aaron Boone. And he finished that year with an eight and seven record. High ERA, but he had a winning record in the major leagues with the Braves. Was back up in 2008 after Peter Moylan got hurt, pitched out of the bullpen that year. Pitched in 45 games, then went to Triple A, elected free agency, and then went back to Japan for a third time. He knows how to pitch. A couple of strikeouts and a walk so far for Carlisle in the eighth inning. Here's Justin Upton with the Braves down seven nothing in the eighth inning. Everybody crank up the voting machine. Vote J up. Hashtag vote J up. Butts County and Georgia's doing their part. How about you folks in Glenn County? Let's go. You know Rick Flair country is going to be voting heavily for Justin Upton. I mean, after all, Rick Flair was in Gwinnett. Is it with the G Braves? Tom, you got more on the Nature Boy? Yeah, no matter how you slice it, Mecklenburg County in Charlotte, he's carrying that with 54% of the vote. And Shelby County in Tennessee, he was born in Memphis, carrying that with the same number. There you go. Can't you see Tom with one of those with the, one of those big headsets with the uh -huh. big ears and the antenna sticking yep. straight up on the convention floor? I think that's kind of what he's working with right now. But you folks in North Carolina, if it's good for the nature boy, it ought to be good for you. J up. Hashtag J up. Let's go. Only, only one of you can vote first, but you can all vote next. <laughs> one ball, two strikes for Justin Upton. The Nationals game was rained out tonight. A little solace as Justin has his second hit of the night. And the Braves have runners first and second with two outs. And here's Hayward. Jason's hit the ball hard twice. And that's going to be it for Buddy Carlisle. Terry Collins does not want to give the Braves any hope in this ball game. He'll match up lefty versus lefty with Jason Hayward here. So Buddy Carlisle. With a couple of swinging strikeouts, a walk and a hit, he'll depart with the Braves threatening with two outs in a 7 0 game. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Atlanta Braves and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves.
the Georgia Lottery, and Toyota. Rough night for the Braves. They ran into Jacob DeGrom, who struck out 11 men in seven innings, and it's a 7-0 New York lead. We promised you earlier in the game our AT&T fan photo. Tweet your photo to hashtag SouthFanPhoto for a chance to be shown in an upcoming game broadcast that's brought to you by AT&T. Alan Selby on the left, Homer on the right. Well, wait. Another expatriate back in the major leagues. This is Dana Evelyn. He pitched in Korea last year, too. Where he achieved somewhat superstar status. Putting up some good numbers for the Mets when Terry Collins has used him. Kind of a sinker slider guy is fastball in the high 80s, low 90s. 22 months away from the big leagues after struggling with Baltimore. He pitched in Korea. And as Evelyn put it in a published story online, he begged for a shot in the bigs. And he gives up a hit to Jason Hayward. And the Braves will play at station station. Now the delay as Simmons will come home and score. Laguerre held the ball. Simmons deked him into the throw and made the play standing up. What in the world was that? Well, I was surprised that. Uh, that he was being held at third base because he had no intention to making the play. And Lagaris fielded the ball and looked up and then realized, oh, he didn't send him. And then he just kind of pump faked. And at that point, Andleton said, well, if he's going to eat the baseball, then I'm going to keep going. But you can see the stop sign there. Andleton kind of drifted. And then when he didn't throw the ball in, heads up play, great instincts by Simmons to go ahead and score. And you can understand why you want to be very cautious with Laguerre. 17 assists for the Mets center fielder since the start of last year. But if he's going to hold the ball, you might as well take a chance. But, but he was holding the ball because he didn't think that the Braves were going to hold the runner. He just was ready to throw the ball back in and concede the run. And when he looked up and the runner hadn't gone, then he was stuck. So a three hit game for Hayward. The Braves avoid a shutout. And they're still alive with Chris Johnson coming up. The bad part for Jason. I don't know if they'll give him an RBI there. They did. Good. Good. Good for him. That's good. So 33 ribbies for Jason. Things are coming around for Jason too offensively. Three hits as you said tonight, Chip, and that's his second hit in two nights against lefties. He had a real rough patch against left-handed pitchers and two for his last two. Jason Hayward too. That last night, Edgen buzzed the tower. Yeah, just hit him in the head. Got a hit. Now, Evelyn's in there, and he breaks his bat, but smacks a single to center here. The Braves are on the board. Let's see if Johnson with two outs can't keep it alive. That one pops away, but no chance for an advance. You know, it's been a weird night for Jason because he had that ball off the fist and. Dropped right out by the second base bag and had a lot of spin. Bounced away from Tejada and he was able to leg it out for an infield hit. He just had the broken bat single, but he also got a key point in the game in the sixth inning with two on hit that bullet that David Wright speared. It's kind of the way his series has already gone. The hard hit balls keep getting caught. Slow roller, David Wright, gloves, patty kicks, and throws on to first in time. And that retires the side. The Braves tag in a run on Buddy Carlisle to make it a 7 1 game.
last booth tonight. It's 7-1 New York in game two of our series, but maybe our new ties will help us not up the answer on the trivia question. ATT Ubers asks us Bobby Bray is one of two active players with seven or more career years of 20 or more homers and 20 or more stolen bases. Who's the other? You know, I, I just can't in my I can't think that Derek Jeter's had seven years of 20 or more homers. But as a tribute, since we're in New York, I'm going to say Derek Jeter because I can't come up with anybody. I'm going to go with another Yankee who was just designated for assignment, Alfonso Soriano. Good call. Is my answer. When in doubt, go to Beltran. <laughs> well, we had the right team, but the wrong guy. Now, is he active or is he on the DL? Okay. Don't need to go there. So Carlos Beltran is the answer tonight. Glynn County was all over Alfonso Soriano, so they have to make up for it with the Upton voting. Yes. A couple days. Another inning for David Carpenter. As it's a 7 1 game, and Murphy. Absolutely out of play. Something that maybe you can relate to, Joe, that, that I can't explain. When a player goes to the disabled base, I think fans expect, okay, he goes down, he gets his work, does his 15 days, he pitches in a couple games, boom, he should be able to come back and just step right onto a major league mound and get people out, if not with ease, with precision. It's not always the case, either as a pitcher or a hitter, is it? No, uh, and it's. No different for a pitcher than a hitter. That's well hit to right. Look at Jason go. Still going, and he gets there. He gets such good jumps, and he takes such good routes. His angles are perfect. I mean, when was the last time you saw him have to change directions in mid-flight? This doesn't happen. It's great reads off the bat. But a, but a hitter's got to get his timing down. He's got to see live pitching. It's no different for the pitchers. Trying to make good pitches to major league hitters. It's usually an outing or two before they feel comfortable. Jordan Walden came back. Remember when he walked the ballpark, I think, in right. Coors Field. Right. This one right at Jason. He's happy about that as Wright pops out. Two outs in the New York eighth. Well, he's happy about that because he can get David Wright paying back a little bit. Yeah. Hey, Chip. Guess who's at the plate right now? That guy. <laughs> Boy, I couldn't, couldn't lure you in. Could I? You know. <laughs> Dude has been on base four times tonight. Very quietly having a nice year for the Mets. Is he a gold glove caliber defensive first baseman? I'd say the answer to that's probably no. Could he turn into one? Maybe. But that was a big source of controversy in New York. Which first baseman were the Mets going to keep? Ike Davis or Lucas Duda? And look at this squib job toward third and under the glove of Chris Johnson. Duda's around first and on his way to second. And Brian McCann's long lost twin stands at second base with two outs. Their dugouts waving towels. I know that that's been kind of their rally cry lately, but they may be waving white towels like, are you kidding me? I mean, that pitch was inside. And he hit it off the end of the bat. That's what imparted so much spin and no chance at all for it to be gloved by Chris Johnson. Look at David. I mean, he's had about a month's worth of these in the last three weeks. That's almost impossible to do on an inside pitch. You're living right on base five times tonight. Strike to Lagaris. One like that, you're, you're happy to get a hit anytime. Yeah. But you're almost embarrassed to run to second. Well, when, when your teammates are waving towels at you mm -hmm. and stuff, you could see them looking in the dugout, almost embarrassed to smile. Oh. oh. 
Unbelievable. If David Carpenter had no luck, no bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. I mean, two absolute pieces of you-know-what oh. right down the lines to make it 8-1. Look at those guys in the dugout. They're like, are you serious? This is fought off the brand jam shot. It wasn't as bad as Duda's, but just as awful. Mercy. There's no no. Popped up out of play foul. Phillies nine, Milwaukee five in the fifth. Baltimore and Washington rained out to make the game up in August. If this score holds, the Braves and Nats will be at a flat footed tie in the division. Nets have eight RBIs tonight from seven different players. That's what you call a balanced attack. But the star of the game for New York tonight's got to be the pitcher, huh? DeGrom? You would think that would be the story. The win, yes, but the story should be DeGrom. He's pitched 11 shutout innings against the Braves since that three run first at Turner Field. Reds beat the Cubs 4 2 in game one of a day night doubleheader. The Cubs getting revenge in game two tonight, 5 to 2 in the seventh. We'll see the Cubs this weekend, and they're playing a little better. But we won't see Hamill, we won't see Samarja. They're now Oakland A's. Lined to La Stella. And that. Will in the inning. So you, you, hit, you hit the ball hard, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, right. And 15 Eastern time. The election results are not quite in, but the <laughs> first precincts from, uh, let's see, Tolliver, Georgia. You can have the final say. Vote for Justin Upton, the final National League All Star. Vote for Jay Up by visiting Braves.com or text N5 from your mobile device to 89269. Voting ends at 4 Eastern Thursday, July 10th. Send Justin to the All Star game by logging on to Braves.com or by texting N5 to 89269.
Hey, vote ten times before you go to bed tonight. There you go. It's not a big deal. Just think what a difference that'll make. Just some late, late votes. Uh oh. Weather's here. AccuWeather is reasonably accurate. It's at 9:30. It's 10:15, and a shot into center field is short hopped by Lagares. And with the rains falling, Tommy Lestella has a hit. That gives him a five-game streak. Tom Hart had it right earlier in the game when he said it's a great night to be a hot dog wrapper. <laughs> Look at the outfield. <laughs> There's stuff blowing all over the place out there. And a strike to Christian Bethencourt. Hopefully the rain will cool things off a bit. It's been steamy in New York City the last couple days. I was coming in a little sideways in that shot up by the lights. Tell you what, you cannot. Braves fans, listen to them. They're doing the chop and the chant in the rain down eight to one. Lined up the middle. Well, thanks to the inspiration of Chipper Jones, as we know, all of Braves country very excited when they get a chance to break out the liquid tomahawk. <laughs> Ryan Domit will come on and pinch hit. Braves aren't going easily in the ninth. Story of the night for the Braves tonight. Julio Tehran didn't have his good stuff. That's got him early. And often five runs in the first three innings. And it was enough for DeGrom to pump mid 90 fastball after mid 90 fastball at the Braves offense. Pop fly foul out of play. A hearty soul. I want to see a real high major league pop up with this wind swirling around and doing what it's doing. That might be. Fun, fun here in the ninth. There's the fly ball. Who wants it? It'll be Lagaris. And he's got it for the first out. Hey, Fox Sports South is honoring the Braves' historic year in Cooperstown with our award winning Driven Series. Three new one hour episodes highlight the unforgettable moments and the untold stories of the trio of Braves Hall of Fame inductees. Our special Driven Series premieres Thursday, July 17th, beginning at 7, only on Fox Sports South. Man, oh man, is that going to be great. Listen to all three of those guys talk about their good times and playing together. Line drive out of play by B.J. Upton. Fox Sports will be at the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies too. 
Tom Hart will be up in upstate New York. Gretchen Caney will be producing our coverage up there with interviews and stories. And the magical moments of the unforgettable days of Bobby Cox, Greg Maddox, Tom Glavin, and of course, Tori, Tony Russa, and Frank Thomas, too. Just hope for good weather. Two strikes. Rain is eased up a bit. Light mist right now, but still heavy wind blowing the top of the city field. That is not something Terry Collins wanted to do tonight. Have some guys get up and throw in the bullpen. Behind Eaglin, but he's scuffling. Tapper, David Wright charges, can't make the bare hand play. Wet baseball. And it's an infield hit for B.J. Upton. He has a three hit night, and the Braves have a three hit inning. And guess what? Terry Collins is not going to take any chances, even with a seven run lead in the ninth inning with one out. So Evelyn has had a rough time in the ninth. The Braves aren't done yet. They've got 12 hits. We're back with more in a minute. Double four hits in his stint in relief tonight, two thirds of an inning. And he'll give way to Juris Familia. The Braves have the bases loaded with Simmons, Freeman, and Justin Upton lurking in the top of the ninth. This guy had a great month of June working. He'd only given up one run when he came in to pitch against the Braves in that eighth inning of game one at Turner Field. And all of a sudden, his own error and a couple of other errors along with it resulted in a very bad inning. The Braves bounced back to win that one. He'd like to atone for that, but he's got a good arm, throws hard, as high as 98 with a slider. Well, I hope the Mets infield is distracted by all the hot dog wrappers. 
That's funny. <laughs> Would it be something if Simmons hits a ball into one of the bags? The plastic bags whipping around the infield? It's possible. And years ago, when Dad was doing the games with you guys over at uh, Shea Stadium, Deion James had a pop fly to left that hit a bird in mid flight. This is what it used to look like at Candlestick yeah. every, every game. I mean, it, is that distracting for the hitter seeing that stuff below the sure. Of the mound? Sure, it is. Most of it going from right field to the left field foul area. Oh, please hit one into the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Dig through the dumpster to find the baseball. If it gets in the corner, it'll wrap around. Here we've got hot dog boxes, we've got cups, we've got hot dog wrappers, plastic bags. Some of Terry Collins' mail. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Little tapper. And there's only one play, and it's going to be to step on the plate. <laughs> Lestella came charging down the line, and he just couldn't outrun the catcher and beat him past the ball to the plate. So. Lestella's forced out. That's the second out of the inning. But now Familia's got to face Freeman. And you know what he does to the Mets. with a one for four night still sitting at 299. Look at all the paper. in that section and didn't have to move. He had Freeman play perfectly. All the way to the backstop, but look at the ricochet right back to Darno. We had a weird one last night that allowed Freddie Freeman to score from third base that hit that signage back there. Where'd this one hit? Well, went right through the legs of the umpire, hit the sign again. Like a trampoline back there. in a strike. Hot shot. Base in right field. That's going to score a couple of runs. And the Braves have runners at first and third with two outs. It's an 8-3 game. 49 RBIs for Freeman. Get them while you can. Doesn't matter when it is, what the score is. Long time hitting coach when I first broke in Dixie Walker who was a minor league hitting instructor for the Dodgers said you know you got to be greedy you got to be greedy as a professional hitter they're going to be those over nights so if you've got a couple in a game like this get another one and with that hit Freeman has a two for five evening 
His batting average now at 301. The first time Freeman's been over 300 since May the 30th. The Braves aren't done yet. Here's Justin Upton. He's got hits in his last two at bats. Downstairs. A familiar refrain in the dugout on a night like this is, hey, let's give him a finish. You know? Mm -hmm. You're down eight to one. Let's, let's get let's get eight in the ninth. How's that? Or nine in the ninth. They don't hold Freeman. He'll take second base. Puts a little more heat on the Mets. Takes away the forced second. Big overhang above our booth. I can't tell if there's lightning flashing, but I'm getting. Seems like it is, yeah. Feeling that there might be. It's going to start to come down heavier. Good cut, no late, but a good swing. 98 mile an hour fastball, too. Well, if Upton can hit one safely to left, he can bag a couple more out of the eyes here and make it an 8 5 game. And the Braves down to the last strike. Sweeping slider will strike out Upton and end the ball game. New York beats Atlanta for a second straight game. 8 3 is your final score. The Braves refused to quit. They played a couple in the ninth, but fall five short here in Gotham.